is. So this will be part haul, part vlog, because Tommy and I went to Detroit over the weekend. Tommy's birthday is tomorrow. Um, and so for her pre-birthday weekend, we went to Detroit to hang out and I asked my folks on Facebook if they could give me suggestions as to places to go and my people came through. So we got, and I should be, hopefully I have pictures or video of all of these things, but um, one of the first stops that we made was to the Shake Shack because um, I went to a conference many years ago and I was with two uh, young women who live in the US and they took me to the Shake Shack and I'd never been there before and when I was there I had frozen custard flavored like coffee and it basically changed my life so whenever I'm stateside I go to the Shake Shack so we went there and then we took um, a bus and I have to give a shout out to the bus drivers in Detroit because they were really nice to us they gave us directions when they saw us walking in the wrong direction, one of the bus drivers like got off the bus and ran down the street and pointed us in the right direction. And they even waited for us. So just really amazing service from Detroit bus drivers. So thank you very much. In any event, uh, we were taking said bus to go to the John K. King bookstore for rare and used books. And I had so I want to tell you about the books that I uh, that I bought. Um, so first of all, and we do have some footage from uh, from this this part of our journey. We need to come back down here. This is amazing. This is a really good first stop. Mm -hmm. Smokey Robinson. This is awesome. So first of all, the bookstore is great. I think it has three or four floors. It seems to be four floors. It seems to be in um, kind of like a factory building, older building, uh, but still accessible because they did have uh, an elevator, well, stairs to get into the main floor, but then an elevator afterwards. But they had amazing books, lots of rare books, and I'm talking not only fiction and non-fiction books and old magazines and DVDs and um, like concert paraphernalia from jazz musicians from Detroit, but they also had Bibles from the 1800s. Uh, they had a bunch of Mennonite records, I believe, from the 1800s and 1900s. Um, they had a number of other like really, really, really old, old, old texts that were pretty they're pretty affordable if you're a book collector, which I'm, I'm not, unless it relates to science fiction, but it was just really cool to be there. The staff uh, was really friendly and really nice. So we spent a lot of time in the hardback section of the science fiction and fantasy part of the store, and I bought some anthologies. Now I'm not gonna go through all of them because they're pretty much all the same, but I'll give you a sense of what I'm talking about. So this is the oldest one that I bought. Um, this is the world's best science fiction from 1970, and the anthology of the year's best science fiction uh, writing by all of these people. Now, I do not <laughs> recognize any of these names except for Ursula K. Le Guin, um, and this was edited by Donald Wolheim. So, I got all I bought all of the anthologies under this title uh, from the bookstore. So, I got the 1970s version. Got the 1972 version, the 1973, the this one is has no cover, 1975, 1976, 1977, and 1983, and that's it from this series. So these were all edited by Donald Wilhelm. So I didn't get the full like a full decade, but I think I got a pretty good amount so seven years which is you know a pretty good chunk of a decade so this is science fiction from the 70s and I'm not sure exactly how these um, stories were chosen and they're really well priced you know three dollars and fifty cents for one of these um, books I think that these uh, were winners I think these were winners of the science fiction short story award but 
when I go through one of them that I'll give you a better a better sense. So that, and then I got the ninth annual, ninth annual of the year's best science fiction. Now this title was um, edited by Judith Merrill, and you've heard me talk about Judith Merrill before. So when I bought some used books at the WizCon conference this year, I bought a book of hers. I think it's called Daughters of the Stars or Daughters of the Earth. Judith Merrill is also, was also living in Toronto in the 70s and 80s, and she, when she passed away, she donated all of her books to the Toronto Public Library. So the Toronto Public Library has the largest collection of science fiction and fantasy books uh, in the world, and it's called the Judith Merrill Collection. So, um, and I've, I've visited it, and it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So this is Judith Merrill's, um, this is the, the book that she, she edited. Um, yeah, and she's a science, they call her here a science fiction and fantasy anthologist, which is kind of cool. So just looking through here, again, it's a collection of short stories, and I do not recognize any of the names of these people, but what I will say that's really interesting is that when I was looking through all of these books, I noticed that most of the writers are male, um, and so even here, William, Fred, Peter, John, Alfred, Alan, Bruce, Lloyd, Fritz, Richard, Charles, Jules, Bernard, J.F., R., Wald, Frederick, Frank, Ray, Ben, Andre, W., Paul, Mort, Cliff, E., Gerald, Cordwainer, who's, what is that, Cordwainer, that's a name, Cordwainer, and Anthony. So I'm assuming that if there are women who wrote short stories in this edition, that they either wrote those stories under their initials, so that R, J, E, and W were women, or they made up um, pen names, because I know that it was not uncommon in the 1970s and 1980s and 1960s and all the way back to the 40s for women to write under uh, male names or to write using only their, um, only their first initial. So we'll look at that. Okay, that said, so I am looking forward to reading these, but the ones that I'm most interested uh, in reading are the ones that I'm gonna tell you about right now. So these again are also anthologies. So this one is called uh, Children of the Future, 10 Stories of Extraordinary Young People. And this uh, was edited by Stanley Schmidt. The publication date is 1982. So let me just read the back panel. So Anne Set, the boy whose songs made an emperor weep. Candy, 11-year-old survivor of a worldwide plague. Melissa, immortal but doomed to live forever in a child's body. All are children of the future. Here are their stories and more by Theodore Sturgeon, Anne McCaffrey, Orson Scott Card, and other top science fiction authors. Collected from the pages of Analog Science Fiction Science Fact, which was founded in 1930, this anthology represents the best from half a century of award-winning magazine fiction. So all of these stories are about special children from the future. Um, so I got this anthology. I was very intrigued by the idea of um, special children and also special children as was imagined by these writers in the 80s. In 1982. Um, the other one is called The Other Side of Tomorrow, original science fiction stories about young people of the future. So this, this anthology, oh, there's a card. This anthology um, was, so this anthology was published by Random House in 1973. And this one says, what will life be like for the young people of tomorrow? What will they inherit from today? And what strange new situations will they face? Nine popular science fiction writers explore these questions in lively stories written especially for this book. Their answers are intriguing and remarkably varied. Imagine what happens when teenage hot rodders test the latest supercars. What's a hot rod? I don't know what a hot rodder is. Genetic manipulation produces some unfortunate side effects in the young. Groups of young people form communes on other planets. The government controls human behavior through food additives. Um, these are only a few of the possibilities awaiting on the other side of tomorrow. Some will make young people long for the distant future. Others will make them glad that they lived today. 
So I'm really interested in this because obviously it's 2019, so we are the tomorrow, or even beyond the tomorrow that was envisioned by these writers in 1973. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading, reading this. Um, the other... I just noticed that one of the stories is called Let My People Go, which um, is a refrain in a song, a Christian song that was used by enslaved Africans. Um, so who knows? Who knows if there's gonna be some content related to African American folks. But the reason why I'm interested in these two is because as you'll know from my mid-year book freakout tag, I recently, well this year, I read um, Look Ahead, or Looking Ahead, uh, and that was a collection um, edited by Rosarium, well, I forget who edited it, but it's published by Rosarium Press, and that book was a collection of short stories, all written by the, the author, and that was about young people in the future, but I believe that that uh, book was published in the, in, at, between 2014 and 2019, so what I would like to do, and this was Tommy's idea, so I have to give her props for this, is uh, she's she's fist pumping in the back um, is read these books and compare them to the uh, anthology that was published in uh, 2014 ish to 19 I'm not sure which year um, and then just look at what the difference is and perhaps whether the anthology that was more recently published published answers some of the questions set out of these so um, you will see in the next little while, maybe the next six months to a year, that I'll start uh, recording more videos that take that put books in conversation with each other, and uh, I really want to spend time reading this uh, this old science fiction fantasy and comparing it to uh, books that I've read or books that I plan to read. In particular, anthologies like um, Octavia's Brood, for example, or the um, um, New Sons. Right, that came out this year. I, I want these anthologies to be in conversation with each other. So uh, I hope that you find that interesting. After we went to the bookstore, we ate at a great restaurant called Savannah Blue. Uh, the food was just amazing. I had oxtail uh, the first night, we went twice. First night I had oxtail and Tommy had ribs. Second night I had the salmon, the salmon and Tommy had a burger with mac and cheese. And the food was amazing. So like, if you ever if you ever end up in Detroit, you have to go and has a dress code, so make sure you look fly. Um, so we did that. We also went to the African American, the Museum of African American Civilization, I think it's called. Um, and that is, oh, the Museum of African American History. So I got this nice mug because their main exhibit is called And Still We Rise. And we got And Still We Rise t-shirts. And then I got this t-shirt that says, nah, Rosa Parks, which I love. Um, so that was, that was a really interesting um, experience. The museum's exhibit is more an artistic depiction of the passage of Africans from uh, the continent to all the way to the US and then ending in Detroit. Um, it was interesting to go to. I was a little bit disappointed because I expected it to tell the story of a greater variety, a greater group of Africans, but it was very focused on African men. So all of the exhibits were written from the perspective of African men. Um, so how were slaves treated? Well, it would be the African men. And what was royalty like? African men. Um, who was in the markets? African men. Like everything was a lot of the um, the depictions were of African the African male experience even when there was a um, artistic rendering of a barbershop barbershop and hairstyle salon it only had like two barbershop chairs and one man fixing another man's hair while another man was waiting and I'm just like you know what it's the year 2000 um, this exhibit I think uh, opened in 2009 they said or somewhere close to that time um, and so obviously, you know, women were around, so it would have been nice to have more women's stories and experiences woven in, into the entire exhibit. 
Um, and also there is nothing about LGBT folks um, and our contributions to the American experience, civil rights movement. Like, I mean, I zoomed through some of the more contemporary stuff, but um, I didn't see anything at all. So it was, it was actually quite disappointing because it was yet again, another androcentric view of the African American experience. And I feel like we have no excuse now. We, we need to be telling the stories of all of us. Um, there's nothing about what it would have been like for um, African Americans with um, mental illnesses or physical disabilities. Um, there's there's very little f about the different classes of folks at the time. There's just it it just left a lot to be desired. So if you're a critical thinker and you want a well-rounded experience, you you'll be disappointed. Um, on the positive side, there were some really cool exhibits. Um, the artistic renderings were, were cool. There was a redesign um, of a slave ship, so we walked through that, and that was very uncomfortable, obviously. Um, so it was it was cool in a couple of ways, uh, but it was it was also disappointing. Staff were great. So that is it. We are waiting for our uh, train to go back to Toronto from Windsor and we've had a really great weekend. So I hope that you enjoy this vlog slash look at all the cool old books I bought and look at my t-shirt and my new earrings and all the things. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>